Hello friends and welcome to Levelhead, where we look at and learn from great game design. Today we're examining the high difficulty platformer 1001 Spikes. 1001 Spikes is just so good. In the first level head, we took a look at the original, an overlooked title on the Xbox Live Indie Arcade. In just the first stage, there were so many things that the player was taught through a solid and consistent experience. It's hard to believe that it could be topped. But believe it or not, the sequel tops it. It brings back everything that the original had to offer. The entire Temple of Yukampa is there to experience, but it received a top to bottom overhaul, upgraded both in visuals and game design. On top of that, the amount of levels has more than doubled along with piles of secrets and hours of multiplayer fun. 1001 Spikes is 100% polish. I dare say this game outdoes even the exalted Super Meat Boy in a clean, tight final product. This sequel follows up and delivers on the high points of the original like no sequel has done before. Every level is improved upon, the soundtrack and mechanics were expanded, and the game's responsiveness skyrocketed. 3-1 is the same level as 2-1 in the original, but it received a sexy new paint job and oozes atmosphere. Stepping in for the first time, it felt less like a dead stone temple and more like the grimy living waterways of the original castle. Castlevania. The visuals weren't the only thing to receive an update though, so let's dive into the meat of this incredible piece of architecture. Nothing in this game is quite as impressive as the first few seconds of this level. Before you're even confident enough to take one step forward, an unnaturally biting click plays and red covers the screen. More spikes than you could count extend from every imaginable surface, and the full weight of this dangerous, scary temple of Yukampa is pressed down upon you. There's no way to go but forward. Now, right off the bat, you're informed that these spikes aren't thinking about you for a moment. They start and stop on a rhythm, easily observable during the hesitation that the severely intimidating sight of 1001 spikes causes. The game literally stops you short with awe and then shows you your window of opportunity to work with while you're stopped. Once you decide to proceed, you begin to notice that there are evenly spaced safe zones that you could aim for while moving forward when the spikes are retracted. The first area gives you a lot of room to jump if you don't make it to the safe zone in time, but the second one has ceiling spikes to keep you grounded and force you to have some land speed precision without relying on your jumps. The more you ascend, the more the level tries to challenge you and make you adapt. The ceiling is still covered in spikes here, but there's a gap this time. Using your high jump is too dangerous, but there's just enough room to low jump and this is meant to tip you off to the next part, so pay attention. Jumping up on this block, the hallway ahead is a long stretch, too long to make it to the end without being skewered, but take a step back and look at the context clues laid out before you. There's nothing above you to endanger you while jumping. The hall is only two spaces tall, which means that a high jump is out of the question here. There's a block at the end of the hallway, meaning you're gonna have to jump at the end, and the previous segment gives you some room to mess around with jumping in a somewhat safe manner. These things together lead you to understand that the rhythm the spikes are running on leaves plenty of time to use the basic jump and stay safe with simply your own hang time. The hallway is just long enough to make you instinctively jump near the end to get on the block, but even if you miss it, you might just accidentally be alright. This technique is utilized in a variety of ways later in the game, and while it's a pretty advanced maneuver, this level will make you a professional at it. Don't get comfortable. Like I said before, the difficulty goes up the farther you do. The next floor ensures that you use this nicely timed technique at least once or twice to progress. There isn't enough time to jump up and make it to the middle semi-safe zone in one go, especially since this block is just a nasty trap, so you're forced to take a moment and lead into your forward movement by covering some of the distance in the air, mere pixels above death. Even beyond this, if you stick around in this alcove for too long, you may miss an off rhythm spike and end up getting shut down. This is a little prod to keep you moving forward. And look, just after that, you finally get a true moment to take a breath before moving on. In this next area, you have to work to move this block whenever the floor is safe so you can reach the key to the door below. Take note of how this is positioned though. It would have been easy to make this whole section below just a continuation forward, but it was specifically placed directly under. Can you imagine why? The block pushing is a rather simple task, since by this point you should have the spike rhythm completely nailed down and there's limitless room to jump to safety onto the block. You can clearly see the next steps to be taken below. A precision platforming section and a timed flamethrower are your last challenges, but the fact that you can see all of that is your key to beating it. Check this out right here. Check this out. The flamethrower activates on a regularly timed pattern, similar to the spikes that you're jumping over. Subconsciously, your mind is putting together a polyrhythm of the two and beginning to memorize the timing. By traversing this length no less than three times, you can pick out exactly how long it takes to move this distance just by feeling it out. 
By the time you grab the key, you've already been subliminally trained to instinctively get from here to here in just the right amount of time. Do you see just how awesome the design in this level is? Every aspect is intentionally placed. Nothing is accidental and nothing is overlooked. Each individual spike, block, and gap of empty space are directions on your map to the door at the end. In this sequel, every level gets a name, and in a confident display, this one fittingly represents the entire game and proudly stands above the rest as 1001 Spikes. If you're looking for a tough and enjoyable platformer, look no farther than 1001 Spikes. You can get it on Steam for the low price of $15, and you get a $5 discount if you own Cave Story Plus or Night Sky. I sunk 20 hours into this game, beating it just as Avon, and with 19 other characters to unlock and play the game in completely different ways, you can be sure that I have plenty more ahead of me. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode of Levelhead, why don't you check out another one? Oh, and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more. This has been Sunder, and I'll see you next time.